come down to this week. And I don't know if you ever experienced anybody in your family ever been tragically took it. But how how dramatic it is to lose a life suddenly. And through all of that, still can press your way to church. I wish you had a witness in you. So whatever you are going through, whatever you are facing, I want you to do to divorce yourself from what you are going through. And I want you to pray for the neighbor that you're standing next to. Because I come to realize that you don't know what it took for somebody to come to church in the morning. You don't know what, what issues they have waiting for them when they go back home. So divorce yourself from whatever you're going through. And with the power that God has given you, I want you to pray for your neighbor. At this time, I'm going to have Minister Eugene Stillman come and lead us in our altar prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you, God, for who you are, God. And God, you know every situation, God. You know every person that's at this altar, God. And Father God, we come to you this morning, God, not asking for any money, God, not asking for cars or clothes, God, or anything or any material thing, God. But God, we come here just to say thank you, God, because God, you've been so faithful, God. You've been so good, God, that, that we didn't lose our mind, God, that we didn't lose our job, God. God, that the chains 
will be broken out. The message that will come forth this morning, God, let it be life-changing, God. We anoint the speaker right now, God. God, we ask that God that he empty himself, God, God, that you may flow in him, God. We thank you, that God, that you woke us up, God. It wasn't the alarm clock, God. It wasn't today that woke us up, God. It was you that woke us up, God. And God, you deserve deserve our glory. You deserve to deserve the praise, God. And you deserve the honor, God. And God, we thank you for being God. And we thank you for being all God by yourself, God. We thank you for being righteous, God. We thank you for being holy, God. We thank you for being just, God. We thank you for that even in our weakness, God, you're made strong. And God, help us never forget about you, God. And all the great and mighty things that you continue to do, God. And we thank you, and we thank God, and all the saints of God say amen and praise God. As you go to your seat, give me a hug and tell them good morning.
God reigns, give him a praise in this place. Come on, that is good. I think it's just somebody else, but I said, if you know that God reigns, give him a praise in this place. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall be proposed to the Lord, and he will share the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
standing at the word of God while you're standing. We give honor to the legacy of this house. Amen. To the one and only Bishop Michael Marcus Brummis. Fragrance of this house. First Lady Mama Lanita Brothers. To the pastor elect, my brother, my friend, the nine Williams. And the first lady elect Celeste Williams. Baptist Church. My mother is here. My sister. The Spirit of Christ, to all these great men and women of God, to the choir, God bless you, musicians. First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. I'm going to read for you two verses. Verse number one, then we're going to drop down to verse number 13. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. Drop down to verse number 13. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil. He had bought and anointed David with oil. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. Uh, just look at somebody and encourage them and say, Neighbor, you're next in line. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. You're next in line. Moving very swiftly, when we look at the condition of our country and the world, uh, that we live in, we see that things have prog progressively gotten worse. For every act and our deed, there seems to be double or triple the negative. Then we look at the body of Christ and we ourselves, the church, have focused our attention on titles, popularity, praise breaks, modernizing our sanctuaries and even our worship services. And even now more so, it's become about money exchanging. And unintentionally, we slowly have taken our eyes off Jesus. When we put all this into perspective and we include false doctrine being taught, and even within our schools, a curriculum being forced upon our children that is totally contradictory to the word of God. I'd like to make an announcement here early this morning that the body of Christ believers are in a state of emergency. Yeah, yeah, we have to get back to Jesus and Him alone. I'm so glad for the word on this morning that reminds us that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Jude reminds us while our focus has shifted, he said there are certain men who have crept in on the way, uh, uh, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly man, turning the grace of our God and denying the only Lord, our God, and Jesus Christ. Understand, hear me, believers and body, on this morning that we are in a spiritual warfare. Uh, 
Zeit. Which tells us, and Ephesians tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And right through here, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that right through here is not the time for you to settle and not the time for you to quit and not the time for you to throw in the towel. Uh, uh, but you got to get your strength back in this season and get back into the fight. Understand that there is a spirit of urgency upon the body of believers and to those he has called with the burden of carrying out his word. Uh, come here, Jeremiah and Isaiah. And this evening, this morning, we're going to deal with Samuel and David. But God says to you, believers, that the time is not on our side. Understand that we cannot go down the same path that we've seen generations before us and dip and dab into things as such. Because it's so dangerous in this time that God says the moment you play with it, it can cost you everything if not your life. Uh, understand that the enemy, the devil, is like roaring lion, uh, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, but in this season, you got to come with your A game. Uh, you got to be built on the word. Uh, the word has to be in you. Uh, you got to stand on the word. You got to live uh, by the word. Uh, somebody shout, we got to get back to Jesus. Uh, yeah, here we find in 1 Samuel, Samuel himself, the priest uh, and prophet of Israel. He was born out of great faith due to his mother being unable to bear children. Some of you in here were born out of a dry place and a dry season in your mother's life. But it's not by happenstance that you're here today. And can I hear as I was praying in the Holy Ghost that God is going to use this dry season. And turn it around in your faith. And it's only a matter of time before God shifts things in your faith. For this dry season is only preparation for what is getting ready to come next. God, understand, has a great work for you to do. Israel now in a season of transition. Uh, somebody shout transition. Yeah, we like to use that word transition. But you really don't know what it really looks like transition until you're right in the middle of it. And see, transition is not always comfortable. Transition does not always feel good. Transition is not always something that we choose to deal with. But transition sometimes is just something that happens when God wants to do something new. Understand oh, Samuel being a good fearing man. He's much older now. He served well, but is now put in a place to anoint a king of Israel. While this is going on, the people in Israel at this time, watch the story here, have been complaining and looking at other nations and rules and regulations that they did and did not have and begin to say, we want a king or leadership as such. And Samuel began to get discouraged in his spirit. But the Lord helped Samuel to see the real issue. It's in 1 Samuel 8 and 7. He said, heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you. 
uh, understand for they have not rejected you uh, but they have rejected me uh, that I should not reign over them uh, Samuel gives the people what they ask for uh, and anoints Saul as king over Israel uh, while Saul is described as handsome and likable uh, and he's tall and he's got a nice figure he was not who Israel needed at that time and you have to be careful in this season trying to be like everybody else thinking that the grass is greener on the other side you have to be careful in this season trying to look at what everybody else is doing when God has a great work for you to do understand that you don't know what they've been through you don't know what it took to get there so really I don't want your anointing because your anointing for me won't be authentic because I haven't been through what you've been through but God give me my own anointing give me my own story that I may be able to reach that you can't reach. We have to be careful trying to be like everybody else. Matthew 6 and 8 says, Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask of him. Somebody shake your neighbor by the hand and say, Neighbor, he already knows what you need. Yeah, so King Saul at the time is given the assignment here in chapter 15. You gotta go back a chapter. God instructed Saul, now watch this, to completely destroy the Amalekites who had ambushed the Israelites. Now the Amalekites, the enemy, the Israelites, God's chosen people after the Exodus. Now this word Quran in the Hebrew means to completely Completely destroy often means dictate dedicating something or someone completely back to the Lord either by destroying it or by giving it as an offering yeah what has God told you to destroy in this season to completely give it back him. Revelation 2 and 4 tells us, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. He says, yes, the anointing is upon you and the call is upon you. But before we progress, we must digress and spend some time with Jesus. Uh, understand that God is calling us as believers into a season of unordinary. Somebody shout unordinary. Yeah, a place that's not popular and a lifestyle that's not in the end, quote unquote, but it's in the will of God. Is there anybody? in this season that says I just want to be in the will of God. Forget what everybody else is doing. But Lord, if I'm not in your will, I don't want it. Now you gotta watch the will because there's a permissive will but then there's a submissive will. So you've just been operating off of his permissive will. That means you can still have a little bit of fun and then still do what he's called you to do. But God says, I want your submissive will. I want your heart in this season. I want your all in this season. Understand a lifestyle that won't get you a lot of followers, but you'll have some power. And I'll take power any day off of a bunch of likes and hearts. He says, a lifestyle that represents Romans 12 and 1. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reason 
reasonable service, a lifestyle that will allow you to go everywhere and attend all the events and the functions. But according to his word, he already instructed us in 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 to come out from among them and be separate sayers of the Lord. God says you're wondering why What you're going through And what you're dealing with Because he's calling you into a season Of separation Not isolation Because isolation is where The trickery of the enemy Can get to you But he's calling you just to separate Yourself In a season of consecration That you may be able to Spend some time with him And hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, we made the life harder for ourselves uh, trying to keep up with the Joneses uh, and trying to have a lifestyle uh, that is totally contradiction to uh, his word. Uh, but understand 1 Peter chapter 2 and 9 declares uh, you are not like that. Uh, you are a chosen generation. Uh, you are a royal priesthood. Uh, you are a holy nation. Uh, you are like peculiar people uh, that God has snatched out of darkness uh, into his marvelous light. Uh, uh, can I go a little bit further? Uh, while Saul was instructed to destroy everything, uh, he went after what was comfortable. Uh, and as a result of going after what was comfortable, uh, it all resulted in disobedience. Uh, oh, oh my God. Uh, of you stay in places and stay in things and continue to hang around the same people because it's comfortable. Understand that faith isn't comfortable. Faith wouldn't be faith if it was comfortable. But he says faith is the evidence of things not seen. When things are hopeful. So it's not what I see. It's not what's present right now. But it's an act of faith for me to step out and believe God in this season. Understand that you got to obey the voice of God in this season. I know what everybody else said, but what did God say? Just because it's comfortable doesn't mean you're supposed to have it. And I learned even within my own ministry and even in my own life that sometimes you got to stand all by yourself if nobody else is with you but you're obeying the voice of the Lord you're going to lose some friends everybody ain't going to understand you you may even lose some family members you may disconnect with people that you've been around a long time but as long as you're in the will of God, somebody shall have got to obey God. Yeah, as a believer and a child of God, our allegiance is to God and the man. And can I tell you that your blessing in this next season is predicated on your obedience. His word urges us that Bella is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. What God has for me is not worth a moment of compromise. What God has for me is not worth a moment of me getting angry and sinning. What God has for me is not worth a moment of me saying the wrong thing and talking too much and act, reacting before I think. But he says in this season, you got to shift things in your favor. And so that's why his word declares, Samuel replied to Saul, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your birth offerings and sacrifices are your obedience to his voice. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than offering the fat of realms. Understand that sacrifice is only a result 
of indirect disobedience. And obedience at the wrong time is still a result of disobedience. Understand it's not worth your anointing. That's why he told Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in the womb of the belly, he said, I knew you. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You want to shout, I've got an expected end. But in this season, we've got to obey God. Understand that it takes a mindset to obey. God. It takes a mindset to go after the things of God and yet God himself. That's why Romans tells us you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why do you think the enemy attacks your mind? Because it starts in your mind. That's why he has you tripping one day but then up the next day. That's why they under the blood of Jesus because if you lose your mind in this season he understands that you won't make it to your destiny if you lose your mind in this season he understands that you cannot appreciate the breakthrough when it comes if you lose your mind in this season while we're only moments away from a brand new year but God says I still got some blessings in 27 What's your name on it? But if you lose your mind, work through here. You won't be able to attain the very things that God has for you. We find here in chapter 16. Can I go a little bit further? And I'm out of here. After Saul had been rejected by God because of his disobedience and his pride. Understand that pride is selfish. Pride cares about self. You cannot let yourself get in the way of your own blessing. All the time we like to blame everybody else and everything else. But sometimes we got to learn how to move self out of the way. And so he says, Samuel now on assignment to anoint David as king. The Lord tells Samuel, you mourned long enough. Go fill up your flask with olive oil. The very thing that carries the oil. And go to Bethlehem. Now Bethlehem, you know Bethlehem. The birthplace of Jesus. He says, find Jesse. Now father of David. The ancestor of Jesus. Father of eight sons and two daughters. He says, out of all of them. He says, I've selected one of his sons to be the king. He says, before you were born, I appointed you a prophet to the nations. He said, God chose us before we were given an alternative. Understand that God is intentional. And his word reminds us that he does all things well. Not only do we see that God is intentional, but we see that God is with us. Understand that I came and let somebody know that right in this season, where it seems like it's lonely in this season, nobody understands you in this season. Folk have walked away from you in this season. You've been lied on. You've been cursed out. People have sat down on you. People have mistreated you. People have counted you out. But I came with a word for Sheila this morning that God is with you and every person under the sound of my voice that God is with you he does not slumber nor does he sleep God is our refuge and our strength a very person here in the time of trouble you want to shit somebody by the hand and say he's with you every step of the way and so what's the text here uh, let's be with Chris God instructs Samuel to do something that could potentially put him in harm's way. God at times puts the call into dangerous situations. But the good news is that he protects his 
told. His name is Jehovah. Show. 
Yes, he died. 